to just share briefly from the word of God before we jump into our time of prayer. Um, and uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 11. Um, this is a, a scripture perhaps that is uh, familiar with some, um, but let me read it to you. It says, well, I'm going to start at verse 10 just for a second give you a little bit of context. This is Paul, of course, writing to the church in Corinth. He writes to them a lot of things about living uh, godly lifestyles. Um, in verse 10, it says, Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Verse 11, Lest Satan should take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Um, we are aware, Paul is saying, that if we're not careful, we will allow the enemy to use us, to take advantage of us, to manipulate us, to maneuver and to mess us up, to get us off track from our purpose, to get us distracted from what God has called us to. Um, we don't want to be ignorant. He said, we are not ignorant of his devices and we know he has many devices he has many schemes he has many plans that he uses to get people off track what's sad is that often the devices he uses are the people of god that we allow ourselves to get in our flesh and to allow the devil to use us but nevertheless the spirit of god who gives us wisdom who leads us into all truth who reveals things that are yet to come to us and all of this, you can read about read about the Spirit of God, John 14, 15, 16. His role is to guide us into all truth. He will not let you be ignorant. You know, he gives you discernment. He gives you wisdom. He gives you a word of knowledge. Read that in 1 Corinthians 12 about all the different gifts that he can give you. And when you do, you're going to see that the devil has devices that he will set you up to try to get you distracted from your purpose. And that's why Jesus was, he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he was praying because he knew his call. He had a purpose. He had a plan. He came to earth with one, uh, one task in mind. That is to seek and to save that which is lost. He came with the intention of taking on the sins of the whole world uh, and then dying for us all so that we could have eternal life. He did not want the devil to distract him. And so he took, you know, his inner circle and, and went out to pray and said, pray for me while I go over here and pray for myself. And you know the story. He prayed and, and the word of God says, sweat like drops of blood. That's how intense the prayer was. He prayed that the devil would not cut in on him because watch this, he was man and he was God. Man in, in, on the outside, God on the inside. Just like us, the Holy Spirit lives in us. We are man, but we are godly because the Holy Spirit lives in us. The key for us is to not let man override God's will in our lives, to not let our spirit, I mean, our flesh uh, uh, take dominion over our spirit and our calling and our purpose. So we want to be aware of the enemy's tactics. And so Jesus said to them, watch and pray. In other words, don't just pray and be blind. Watch and pray. What does that mean? Pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention. If I'm praying for somebody who's sick, maybe right now they got a bad cough and I pray specifically about that and then maybe that goes away and they, they got a fever. I pray specifically about that. I'm watching and I'm praying. But I'm watching also the enemy's tactics because he will try to come at me from different angles to try to distract me. You ever notice that you know things can be fine until you get on your knees to pray or you pick up your Bible and it's like suddenly you just get so distracted, bombarded with all kind of thoughts or you feel so tired you can't even keep your eyes open all of a sudden. These are tactics of the enemy to keep us from doing what God has called us to do. We have to watch and pray. Pay attention, saints. Don't just be blind. Don't be allowing the enemy to distract you to the place where you're not doing what God called you to do. And your emotions are a place where he would try to come at you. 
try to use people to attack your heart. But watch this. I want us to borrow a page out of out of Paul's book. Look at it again in uh, 2 Corinthians. He says, uh, 2.11, he says, thus Satan should take advantage of us. What does that mean? Go back to verse 10. He said, whoever you forgive, I forgive. You know, unforgiveness planted in your heart, the scripture says, will be like a bitter root. It'll, it'll take plant in you and be a bitter root that grows up to defile many. How many know if we're not careful and we let unforgiveness and bitterness grow in our heart, we are yielding ourselves and that's a tactic of the enemy. Because if I'm bitter against you, if I'm angry all the time, if I'm not forgiving of you, now the enemy has a stronghold. He has a spot in my heart, I like to say, a dark spot. So that means that's less of my heart available to love God according to my uh, father's will. I'm not able to look out for that person. I'm not able to pray for that person because now I got all this bitterness and this anger and this unforgiveness in my heart. And consequently, the devil has gotten his foothold in. His de He's using his device and he's using it against us. He's taking advantage of us, like Paul said. Oh, you you hurt, you you angry. When people say this or that about you, let me make sure they talk about you more. Because if that's all it takes to keep you from getting focused on the things of God, I'll constantly bring that your way. You got to pass that test. I'm so grateful to God today. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, he said he raises up a standard. His word will war against that thing and keep me from being overcome. I'm encouraging you today. Don't let the devil get a foothold. Don't let the enemy uh, cause you to, to or allow the enemy to take advantage of you. Don't let him use you as a tool. Don't let him distract you. Watch out for his devices. His device is a, a, a division. His, You know the word of God says a house divided cannot stand. So you think it's an accident that he's constantly trying to bring division between you and other people who say they love God? That's not an accident. That's a device of the enemy. That's a distraction from the devil. That's a way to get you to get off course. And if I can get you off course, I know that you're going to be so distracted. You ain't going to mess with me. Because if we busy fighting each other, who going to fight the enemy? Who going to fight against the things of darkness? We too busy cutting each other up. I am so profoundly, eternally grateful that God allowed me to see in his word when he said, my food in John 4, 4, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. I looked at that thing and I meditated on that thing and I realized, you know what? When I'm empty, when I'm not doing the will of God, I'm empty. I'm not eating my food. I'm more susceptible to be used by the enemy. I'm more susceptible to be ignorant of his devices. I'm more susceptible to let him take advantage of me. I'm so glad that God opens our eyes to let us see the strategy the enemy will use so that we can know exactly how to pray and exactly how to uh, keep moving and not be distracted, not be uh, caught off guard, not be put in a posture where we're doing something stupid. I wish I had a witness up in here and not even realizing it. I'm sure if Eve could take it back, she would not eat that fruit because she realized, man, I just let the devil take advantage of me. I wasn't aware of his tactic. What was his tactic? Give you most of the truth, but then he had that lie on the end. God didn't say you would surely die. Uh, he didn't say he, uh, you couldn't eat other fruit. Uh, you can't even touch it. He didn't say all that. You know, he adds in just enough, just enough to get you off track. You know, he knows the Bible. The devil know the Bible better than you. He was an angel. He knows the word of God and he will manipulate just enough. But guess what? We know his tactic is to lie. His native language is lie. You know, some people speak French. Some people speak English. Some people speak Swahili, but he speak lie. 
<laughs> and guess what? It's translatable in every language. And so if you're not careful, you'll feed on a lie. And that thing will have you off course and have you all jacked up and have you watch this taken advantage of. God doesn't want me being taken advantage of. God doesn't want me to get distracted. God doesn't want me to harbor unforgiveness in my heart, bitterness in my heart. He's saying those are the tactics. Those are his schemes. Those are his plans. And the very elect could be deceived if it were possible. That's why you got to keep yourself so prayed up, so focused, so You've probably heard me use this example before if you hung around me, but if you have, just pretend like you haven't heard it. <laughs> you know, my friend works for the Mint, and they said, you know, you got to be able to pick out a counterfeit. You know, they would print the dollars, and, and you got to be able to feel it and know if it's a counterfeit or not. But guess what? They don't train them by training them on counterfeits. They train them by training them on the real deal. They learn the nuances, the feeling of it, every square inch of it, so that as soon as they feel a counterfeit, immediately they say, mm -mm, that ain't the real deal. You got to be so rooted in this word, be so prayed up that as soon as you hear something, as soon as you see something, your spirit immediately say, mm -mm, that is not God. You might not even know in the intellect why it doesn't feel right but you know in your spirit that thing ain't right here's the kicker trust the god that you serve trust the holy spirit when he gives you that check in your spirit because sometimes the things that feel odd come from people that you think oh wait a minute that's a person that loves god surely i must be i must be off and we talk ourselves out of the discernment and the wisdom god gives us but when god shows you when he reveals he, is, he doesn't want you to be ignorant of the enemy's devices, you got to believe the spirit of God in you and lean not to your own understanding. Whether you appreciate why it is so or not, trust the living God that he said no. Guess what? The answer is no. I might not even understand why the answer is no. I might not understand why it don't feel right. How many women did I minister to in prison who on the night they got locked up said, I just felt in my spirit I should stay home. Or my mother was begging me to stay home. But they went anyway because they did not heed the voice of God. He was trying to get clarity to you. I remember I had a person that worked for me in the prison that was trying to steal from me. Woke up in the morning, the Holy Spirit told me plans day. They are trying to steal from you. But watch this. Don't be upset because it ain't you they stealing from. It's me. So some of the things you may endure, some of the stuff that you might go through, it really ain't about you. It's about God in you. And so when the enemy comes to try to use us, to, to use his devices against us, to, to let us be taken advantage of, it's ultimately him just trying to come against the things of God that he's doing in your life. So watch and pray, saints. Pay attention. Don't allow yourself to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Know that all these things we are praying about are God's will. Why? Because the word tells us so. So reject doubt that says, oh, that's never going to come to pass. Reject those voices that say, oh, look at that offense. Take that offense on. They did this to you. They did that. Now you walk around all puffed up and angry. Can you pray right? No, because your heart ain't right. Let all that foolishness go. That's a device of the enemy. And then walk according to God's will. Do what his word says. Eat your food. Do the will of the Father for you. Find out your purpose. Focus on who you are in Christ. And all that other stuff will roll off your back like water. Because the Holy Ghost will not let you be ignorant. I'm so grateful that he always reveals what the enemy is up to. It's up to us to use that wisdom. Whether it's watching and praying or knowing specifically how to pray for somebody, whether it's watching and praying, seeing the angles and the arrows that the devil's trying to throw at you to get you out of your place, stand firm. What did he say? After you've done all the stand, stand. And that's my word for you today. Be aware of the enemy's devices and stand on the word. Watch and pray. Watch this. Watch and pray. Don't just watch. Don't just pray. Watch and pray continually, and you will be where God wants you to be. So 
So I praise God for you today. Let's open up prayer lines now and let's begin to pray. Hallelujah, Father God, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you, God, that indeed you knew this day was coming before it ever came. You knew what arrows and darts the devil would throw our way before they ever came. You knew, God, what we would contend with, and you gave us your wisdom. You said you would not let us be ignorant, almighty king. You had already ordained what we would have to deal with. You saw it coming, and you already gave us the wisdom to know how to contend with the enemy's devices so that he could not take advantage of us. God, we thank you today. Amen and amen and amen to you, almighty king. God, we come out of the wisdom that you have given us, believing that you have called us to pray in such a time as this. Believing, God, that it's not an accident that you put us in this posture in the time when the enemy is roving about, looking for someone to devour, looking for someone to deceive. Lord God, we come in the name of Jesus. We confess our own faults. We ask you to forgive us our transgressions. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Wash us whiter than snow. Help us, oh God, in areas of unbelief. Wherever we don't watch and pray, show us that we would not be ignorant, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we come touching and agreeing in the spirit realm, believing you by faith, that you're doing a mighty work in us, a mighty work according to your divine will through our prayers, Father. We know it's not even about us. It's all about you. So we come according to your word to pray without ceasing, God, for those who are sick, for those who are in leadership, for those, oh God, who are serving. We come, Lord God, lifting up all kinds of prayers and requests because your word tells us to do that. We determine by faith, Lord, to not be moved, to stand on your word, to do what you called us to do, Almighty King. We plead the blood of Jesus over the ignorance, oh God, in the earth realm, the ignorance of the saints who've allowed the enemy to deceive them. We come pleading the blood of Jesus over our own hearts and minds, where we've allowed ourselves to be deceived, where we've allowed ourselves to be used of the enemy, God. Forgive us, oh King, in the name of Jesus. Keep us sensitive, Lord, that we will make right decisions and choices in all that we say and do. We plead the blood of Jesus, oh God, over your body. We bind the spirit of division, oh my, oh Father. We ask you to move in a miraculous way. Turn our hearts where we have gotten off track, where we have allowed ourselves to stray from your purpose for our lives, where we have not done what you call us to do, where we have not stayed focused, oh God, where we have not watched and prayed, Father. In the name of Jesus, turn our hearts, oh God, back to you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over the sick right now. Help us, oh God, to come on one accord to pray for those who are hurting, those who are sick, those who are down and out, those who are struggling financially, those who have need of you, God. In the name of Jesus, I cry out, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, for you to move in a miraculous way, for you to turn hearts, oh God, back to you. Hallelujah, God. We come touching and agreeing, Father, in the spirit. Hallelujah, God. For those on this prayer wall, we cry out, Father, for marriages, even in agreement with Rosalyn. You know what she stands in need of. Have mercy, God. You know every marriage that's broken and struggling. Have mercy, God. Bring healing in your way. Touch, oh God, little Ava Paloma. Palomares, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Cause those seizures to cease, to cease, oh King of kings and Lord of lords. We touch and agree with our name, Father. In the name of Jesus, we cry out for Sharon, God, in agreement with Maddie, that you would heal her body, restore, oh God, what the enemy has stolen from her. Bring peace to her soul and healing, God. Let her walk, oh God, live and not die. In Jesus' name, we touch and agree with Vaughn Resper, Lord, for his friend JT. Heal his body, Father. Restore his health. Raise him up, oh God. Let not the enemy snatch away his life. In the name of Jesus, we come touching and agreeing, God. Oh God, thank you for hearing our cry and blessing our sister Janet Williams. 
Thank you, Lord God, for hearing us. We're believing by faith with Gustavo that you heal his mother, that you restore her health, restore her strength. We bind the infirmity called COVID-19 in her body. Have mercy on her, oh God. Heal her. Re restore her. Oh God, turn it around in Jesus' name. Bring peace to Brazil according to his heart's cry in the name of Jesus. Bless him and be with him, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We touch and agree again with Beverly Archer. We praise and thank you for what you've done in our siblings' life. Continue to touch her, touch them, and be with them all in the name of Jesus. We lift up, oh God, Shirley Griffin's heart's prayer for her grandson. Bless him and cover him, protect him. Oh God, touch Anne Morgan. Restore her body, restore her strength and every part of her being. In the name of Jesus, we pray, pray for Andre Smith. Heal him, holy God of COVID-19. Heal his body in Jesus' name. Oh, God, likewise, Bernie Jenkins, we touch the game with Reverend Linda Thomas. Heal his body. Restore him, oh, God. Bring him off of that respirator. Let him go home and be made whole in you, God, that his family would even now see your hand at work and know that you are God. Let somebody's faith be made whole because you lift him up, God. God, we lift up uh, Sabrina Queen's sister, Linda. Continue to heal her, God, from the top of her head to the sole of her seat. Drive out COVID-19 now in the name of Jesus. We come in agreement with Yvonne Freeman. Yet again, we plead the blood of Jesus over her brother, Michael. God, deliver him. Break the grip of addiction over his life. We cast down the strongholds in his mind. We take captive every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of you. Let him, God, find no more pleasure in it. We curse the root of it in his life, that he would have no more yearning for it, that he would drive, it would drive and dissipate, that he would no longer get pleasure from it, that he would come crying out to you, what must I do to be saved? In the mighty name of Jesus, we know you're able, God. We cry for little Delroy. God, led some more in uh, Zimbabwe. Bless him, heal him, strengthen him, restore his head, Lord. Let there be no vestiges of brain trauma or disease or any other, oh God, lingering effect of this trauma to his head. God, you're able. God, there's nothing too hard for you. Turn it around, God. Let him rise up and give you the praise. Let him rise up as a man of God. Let him rise up and know that you saved him. You have the last say. The doctors don't have the last say. God, there's nothing too hard for you. And I'm asking you to do this thing, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I bless you and I thank you. Continue, God, to bless Nate Jokes and Monica Cooper and Nate, oh God, uh, Elaine Ross Jones and Malachi Jones, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah, 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 God. To you be the glory, to you be the honor, and to you be the praise. We thank you, God, for hearing our cries. We touch and agree, Father, with every prayer that's gone forward on this prayer line. We touch and agree with the prayers that have, oh God, been lifted up in hearts and minds. Here's Psalm 107, too, and Jackie Wallace Barnes, and Oh, God, truly heard. Hear their cries, O oh King, and answer them and bless them. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Bless Mary Dickey and hear her heart's cry. We touch and agree with each and every one of them. Even Deaconess Marilyn Hines, we touch and agree, God, that you do exceedingly abundantly more than she has asked or think, thought, Lord God. And touch her life, touch her family, touch all these families represented. Oh, God, on this prayer line, we plead the blood of Jesus over them, believing by faith that you are moving in our midst. You are hearing us, God. You are making a way where we see no way. You are God Almighty. You're God all by yourself. Surely there is nothing too hard for you. Even with the enemy, we desire, Lord God, to cut in on us. I thank you that you're well able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before your glorious throne. We will not yield to the tactics of the enemy, God. We will stand firm in our faith and believe, God, you for great things, believe you for doing even now more than we asked about, more than we thought about, God. Even A. Alexander, we touch and agree with their prayers and Christopher Burnham, 
uh, Jacqueline Barnes and Sheila Pratt, Sabrina Spru. God, we come in agreement. Let your divine will be done. Bless them and hear their cries. And God, bring to pass that which they have asked for. By faith, we cur- cry out to you and believe you, God. Even Patricia Williams and Gail Wright. God, that you're doing a work in them that you're gonna turn around their circumstances, that what the enemy meant for evil, Father, you will turn it around for good, that you are more than a conqueror in us, Christ Jesus, that we are more than a conqueror in you, Christ Jesus, that greater are you in us than anything that's in this world, God. We trust you, we believe by faith that you're gonna do it, God, that you're gonna make a way where we see no way, Holy One. In the name of Jesus, touch Mika right now, Hear her cry. Bless her. Be with her in the name of Jesus, almighty God. We bless you and we thank you for hearing her even, Lord God. Bless uh, cousin Mary Deborah Watson. Oh God, my sisters Beverly and Benita, Lord God, be with them even now. Hear their hearts cry, Father. In the name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, we give your name the glory and the honor and the praise. Great is your faithfulness, God. I thank you, Lord God, that we know that in you all things are working together for good. We know, God, that what you have begun, what good work you have begun in us, you will see it to come to completion. We know that no weapon formed us against us will prosper. We know, God, that you are the great I am. We know by faith, God, that you're doing a work, God, God, in Jesus' name. And what you have begun, you always finish. Hallelujah, 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 and amen to you be the glory. I bless you, God. Bless Irene Edmonds in Jesus' name. Be with her. Hear her cries. Do a work in her, God, as only you can, according to your divine will. We give you the glory now. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. And Lord God, bless every person under the sound of my voice. If you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you've never said yes. See, you can't pray with the confidence that we have because you don't have Christ in you. It's the Holy Spirit in you that gives you the boldness to pray and know and believe and trust that God will answer your prayer. If you've never made that confession, Never say yes to the Lord Jesus. I want you to pray this simple prayer with me that Jesus can come into your life and forgive you of your sins and hear your heart's cries. Repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take control of my life. Take control of my heart. Guide me with your righteous right hand. I repent, Lord. I'm turning completely to you. Help me to do that. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sin. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen and amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, can I tell you today you are a child of God. You are born again. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are being celebrated in heaven. God is pleased with you. Your sins are forgiven. Write this day down. This is your spiritual birthday. God is doing a work in you and he's going to finish it. You might struggle, but believe me, God has his hands on you. He's not going to let you go. Can you send me an email to let me know you made a decision to follow Christ? Email me at Rev Letty Carr, R E V L E T T I E C A R R, at whosoeverbelieves.org. And I will, I promise you, I will respond. And check us out. Whosoeverbelieves.org is a great place to share your faith, to post your pictures or laughter, whatever it is you do on other platforms, you can do it here. And we do it in the auspice of the Holy Ghost. 